It is unequivocal. Climate it's change is now rapid, widespread, and a new report, experts say that we have a new Climate change has affected every region on Earth. Heat waves, droughts, and extreme weather events have become more frequent. Sea levels have risen. Polar ice caps and glaciers are melting. Humanity now faces one of its greatest challenges. Drastically reduce greenhouse gas emissions and stop anthropogenic climate change before it's too late. My friends, the adolescence of humanity must come to an end. We must show that we are capable of learning and maturing and finally taking responsibility for the destruction we are inflicting, not just upon our planet, but upon ourselves. From October 31, representatives from nearly every country on Earth will assemble in Glasgow to present their strategies for reaching net zero emissions by the middle of this century. To achieve this, humanity will have to accelerate its phase out of coal, restrict deforestation, speed up its switch to electric vehicles, and encourage investment in renewables. Vulnerable ecosystems will also need to be protected and restored. So how did we get here? In 1938, an English steam engineer and inventor named Guy Callender first had his findings on the correlation between CO2 emissions and rising global temperatures published. His painstaking research was done entirely by hand in his spare time, yet he was able to demonstrate that the rise in global temperatures from the previous 50 years was relative to carbon dioxide emissions over the same period. And whilst future measurements of the data proved Callender's work to be remarkably accurate, the head of the British Meteorological Society at the time dismissed his findings as a coincidence. In the 1950s, American scientist Charles Keeling used sophisticated measuring equipment installed at the Mauna Loa Observatory in Hawaii to measure CO2 levels in the atmosphere. Beginning in 1958 and continuing to this day, the steadily rising levels are represented in what became known as the Keeling Curve. This time, the scientific establishment was listening, and the Keeling Curve is now considered one of the most important scientific findings of the 20th century. In 1988, NASA climate scientist James Hansen testified in front of a congressional committee, confirming that the correlation between greenhouse gas emissions and rising global temperatures was real, and that global warming had already begun. This was viewed as a watershed moment in the history of climate science, transforming a scientific discussion into a global policy debate. 1988 also saw the establishment of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC, tasked with comprehensively reviewing all current scientific research on anthropogenic climate change and providing recommendations and reports. In their first assessment report, the IPCC laid the groundwork for the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, leading to an International Environment Treaty signed by 154 states at the Rio Earth Summit in 1992. The treaty called for ongoing scientific research and annual meetings to assess global progress in dealing with climate change. The first annual meeting, the Conference of the Parties, or COP1, was held in Berlin in 1995. But it was the 1997 conference in Kyoto where the first concrete steps towards a unified global effort to combat climate change were taken. The Kyoto Protocol committed 37 industrialized countries and the European Union to a legally binding agreement to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by an average of 5% between 2008 and 2012. Despite all countries meeting their targets, global emissions continued to rise. The most notable absentee from the list of Kyoto signatories was the USA, responsible at the time for 25% of all greenhouse gas emissions and the world's largest polluter. Meanwhile, China's rapid industrial growth would see it eventually claim that title for itself. A second commitment period was established in 2012 at COP18 in Doha, but this was superseded in 2015 at COP21 in Paris with the adoption of a new agreement. The Paris Agreement was ratified by every country on Earth, with the exception of Iran, Iraq, Turkey, Eritrea, and Libya. 
the U.S. withdrew in 2017. The United States will withdraw from the Paris Climate Accord. But returned in 2021. Mr. President. Mr. President. Mr. President. Mr. President. Taking lessons learned from Kyoto, this time the agreement was not legally binding and both developed and developing countries were required to make emission reduction pledges. Developed countries also committed to $100 billion annually to financing mitigation and adaptation projects in developing countries. The primary goal of the Paris Agreement is to prevent the global average temperature from exceeding 2 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels, with a preferred target of 1.5 degrees Celsius. The current average global temperature is just over 1 degree Celsius above pre-industrial levels. If the world continues with current climate policies in place, it is forecast to reach as high as 2.9 degrees Celsius by the end of the century. Meeting all current pledges and targets would not bring that down to below 2 degrees Celsius. So where to now? It will take a dramatic course of action from every signatory of the Paris Agreement to limit temperature rise to their stated goal of 1.5 degrees Celsius. The outlook is grim, but there are some signs of hope ahead of the Glasgow summit in November. Chinese President Xi Jinping has announced China will cease funding overseas coal plants, and US President Joe Biden has pledged to double the US's climate aid. And that is why the Glasgow COP26 summit is the turning point for humanity. We must limit the rise in temperatures to 1.5 degrees. We must show that we have the maturity and wisdom to act. All eyes will be on COP26 in Glasgow to see what further progress might be made towards stemming the tide of global warming. <laughs>